Hi everyone, it's Chase Cutter Tutorials where we cut right to the chase about what you want to know. Today's tutorial is about adding symbols to templates. So in the description, you'll see a download link for basically just four image files that show the correspondence of each of these symbols with the templates that you have stored on your local drive. This is an extension of someone else's tutorial, so I want to talk about that very quickly. Composing Gloves on YouTube, he has this tutorial called FL's Workflow Using and Making Templates. Um, so if you've already seen that video, I'm going to talk to you as if that was the case. Otherwise, I'll show you a little after this the whole process plus what I'm showing you in this video. So if you've already seen his video, you know you got to a point where you have to assign just kind of just a random number to hope to get the right uh, symbol from from this little list here. So that's what I'm going to show you now. That's also what's these are just images um, of these in the download. Okay, so if you've already gotten to this point and you know how to enter it, um, the, I'm going to show you all four groups of these. Now, oh, but I should say if you if you if you're confused on how to use these numerical codes, stick around. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so the one and two, these two pages, the only difference is that they're positive and negative, and that creates um, dark versions, I guess, if you uh, do the negative, other than 51 and 52. So here's page three. And by the way, just pause it whenever I'm on one of these if you don't feel like downloading the images. And here's page four. Now, I only went up to 130, negative 133, uh, but I had a hunch based on what I saw that there wouldn't be much past 130, negative 130. And it looks to be true. I didn't want to make another 20 or 30 folders to test all the way up to negative 150. Um, so at least in this version of FL Studio, this is what they are, and that's only as far as they go. Okay, so there's the whole thing. Now, so say you're scratching your head, well, how do I get those on my template? We're gonna, it's now it's already in this guy's tutorial, so you can just go watch it with him but I'll show you a really quick buzz through on how to do it ourselves. Okay, so say you want to make your own template to show up in this list. We're gonna go through how to do that super quick. All right, so go to your files. The fastest way to do it is to just open this file up because you gotta work with it so much, so you might as well do it. So you need to find your FL Studio thing, so OS, C, and then I think it's image line or program files um, it's either right into FL Studio or Image Line. I don't know because I have it on my D drive. Sorry, but find your FL Studio 12 folder like this. Okay, within here, I'm going to go to Data, Projects, Templates. Here are your folders. So I'm going to make a new folder, which makes like a menu folder in FL Studio later when I open it and call this one just Tutorial. So within each of these category things, and nothing's going to actually be a template until you make a subfolder. So I'm going to make this demo template. Within that folder, you need to have an FLP project, just basically a saved FL Studio file. So the point here is to customize FL Studio to look like however you want. So I'm going to make one thing. I'm going to change this icon to a piano and then like change the color to green, whatever. Okay, there's my custom template. Beautiful, huh? Okay, so now you hit save as, then you navigate to the same stuff. So like C, program files, blah, 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 FL Studio 12, projects, templates, and then find your folder, minus tutorial, demo template, and then save it in that subfolder and call it the same thing just to be safe. Demo template in my case. Okay, now it's in this folder, but the last thing we need is to add a .nfo file with certain certain properly formatted text in it. Best way to do that, just like uh, Composing Gloves tells you in his tutorial, is to just find one of these default ones under, so I went to um, FL Studio Data, Projects, Template. I just went to Minimal and pick Basic. Just copy any of these default ones, or Control C, then go back to your folder and paste it next to your FLP thing. And the object here is to rename it. So I clicked it and press F2 or just right click and do uh, rename. It takes so much longer to do that. Name the uh, NFO file the same thing. You're not done yet. Once you've named it, don't leave. Press enter or double click it to 
change this information. So this is what I was talking about. In his tutorial, he gets to this point, and he's like, I don't really care what the image is, and that's fine. He's a super awesome guy, by the way, and I like his tutorials a lot. Um, I'm going to be learning a lot from them in the next week or so. Now, you literally should change this to match what you want. So this is a demo template for my video. So in this, after the equal sign, menu icon index equals. Type either a number or a negative number. And normally, <laughs> uh, we would say, just type a random number and hope it's good. But now, that's the point of this video. You can hit these numbers and um, find the picture you want. So mine, for example, is a nature-based project. So I guess for just this example, I would put um, negative 24. And to wrap it up, we're going to control S or save. Now, these changes won't show up until you reboot FL Studio. Then when I go to new from template, you'll see the tutorial folder, demo template, and there is my little flower, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Um, so yeah, there, that's how to do it. Um, thanks to composing gloves for getting me to that point. Um, and I'll show you, and if he watches, I'll show him what I had to do. is kind of funny, actually, if you want to stick around, uh, to figure that out. So what I did was go to, sorry, this, and I made, it was all in one folder at first. Um, and I literally made just all of these because there's no way you can't tell what what range of um, numbers positive or negative will have it but what I did is I used I found some people on the forums of just random places on the internet um, kind of digging through so yeah here we go this guy like tested them one by one by opening FL studio every time to find it to find what each of these numbers kind of meant and then, then was like taking notes on what they kind of look like. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to take a long time because it could be hundreds of images. Um, and then, yeah, and then he, he was like hacking into or whatever, opening the uh, IL Glyphs font file, which I can't even find in the install file. So I don't, it must be a hidden thing or you can only get it a certain way. I'm not that technically adept. So, but the point is, is, um, yeah, it's actually a font. So here's all the symbols. And then these numerical codes are calling to those symbols through whatever file structure or whatever. So I was like, man, this is going to be hard and take a long time. But then I thought the fastest way to do it would just be clone, um, this file structure of the FLP and the matching number. And then, so I cloned that all 133 plus times or whatever, um, to each of these folders here and then each one of these has just needed the nfo info to be changed with the number and so naming them the exact number i was planning on entering in each nfo file allowed them to instead of me having to go to photoshop and like copy and paste a little screenshot of every single thing or whatever i knew that the number would just correspond by the name of the template quote unquote, these aren't really templates. They're just there to show if you type in each of these numbers, what ink icon is going to be showing up. I mean, you get it. I'm just showing you what I had to think of to uh, get all this to happen as fast as possible without having to do trial and error hundreds of times um, in a very confusing manner. So yeah, there's the result. I hope you guys get good use out of this. It's for a very tiny thing, but I had a lot of extra time today. So I said, screw it. I'll figure this out. And, uh, yeah, so to see more details, uh, or similar information, definitely check out composing gloves. Cause that's where I'm going back to right now to finish this tutorial. Um, and then go on to his more advanced tutorial, which talks about making like contact based templates. And that's exactly what I need. So, uh, I was very happy to find his tutorials and I just wanted to add to one and that's it. All right, cool. Well, I'll see you next time. Um, subscribe. And I'll promise to always only ramble like this at the end of my videos because the whole point of my uh, channel is to get right to the point right away. And I hope I did that with this video. Uh, leave any feedback, comments, or so on and so forth. 
and we'll see you next time on Chase Cutter Tutorials. All right, bye.